those, isn't it? Well, here we go. Well, yeah, Samsung. Maybe it wouldn't need to be in this position. <laughs> Something had happened. Well, here we go. Picks and bass for game number one, Samsung versus GE Tigers. And there's a Rek'Sai band against Lee. I, I think that's very appropriate. He's played it four out of his last five games, as we saw a moment ago. And it's just a very strong pick. And there's a Fizz band against Bliss. They just don't want to deal with it. I don't think it's necessary, frankly, but... The Zerath ban against Kuro is very surprising. That really hasn't been one of his go-to champions this season. Yeah. He's played a wide variety of picks, but that has been on the lower end of the spectrum for sure. That's interesting. I wonder what the next ban's going to be. Morgana would be a smart ban. I mean, like we mentioned earlier, Bliss has done fairly well on Morgana, so to take that away, it's a flex pick. It's something their mid laner does well on, and I think targeting Bliss here is a very easy way to put your team in a good spot against Samsung. All right, Vagar will be taken out of the pool. I agree, I think that's going to be removed. Kogma banned, you can actually just ban Lulu and accomplish most of the same thing right there. Yeah. Uh, you can deny the Lulu, which is more useful in a variety of compositions. GE Tiger will only play the Kogma with the Juggernaut comp, and that requires Lulu, so not sure about good, that one. Good ban there, Maokai against Kuve. It's the only champion he's done well on recently. He's played only Lulu and Maokai in his last five games. Four of them on Maokai, one of them on Lulu, so they have been rather dependent yeah. on right. that. But that means Eve's going to get a little bit of selection here. Corky should be the first takeaway. You know, I think the bans from GE Tigers are pretty good. The bans from Samsung, not, not so great, maybe. It's really just the the Kogma and the Zerath are, are a little weird. Yeah. But we'll see well, what Rek kind of fine, but. We'll, we'll see what kind of strategy they want to develop though. They may have a specific plan for which this Zerath could be a counter. Could be. So Corky removed and taken by Samsung, GE Tigers. Lock in that oh, Lulu yeah. Victor. Oh, I love it. This Victor's been so much fun to watch. Wow, that Such is, a great champion. That's really bold, taking what are presumably the solo lanes that early on in the draft. GE Tiger's not showing a lot of respect here on the red side. Well, Just you want said. to take it away, and Bliss has his choice of counter picks right now, but he has to have something in order to deal with that. Of course, that Lulu could go support, but I doubt it on GE. I really doubt that it would go support, especially because GE's going to be looking to take Janna here to protect the victor. Yeah, I agree. Unless it's like a crazy Lulu Graves lane or something. Because Graves is a distinct possibility, I think. Yeah, Prey hasn't really been gravitating that much towards Graves. We could see it. And they're going to ah, take the, the Janna away That's alongside smart. the Nidalee. That's not a surprise. I do think that has been a very good champion for Eve. Oh, no. <laughs> Last few weeks, Pray. please. The infamous no. Draven, the infamous Praven. The Praven is one of the most horrendous things I've ever seen. Back when Prey was really kind of uh, in, a, in a slump, we'll say it that way. He was known as the worst Draven player, <laughs> basically ever, I would say. <laughs> just hovering over that as a, for a moment, just to kind of troll the fans. I think Lee on Rengar is going to be fun to see because they do have that Lulu Rengar composition. It is scary stuff, and uh, I think a hyper carry like Jinx may do them well later on. I really do wonder what the support pick's gonna end up being. I guess it's gonna be Annie. That's uh, it's a Najin special, but something that uh, Gorilla, I'm sure, can play very well as well. Look at all that hard engage. This is actually yeah. the first time we've seen the GE Tigers run the Lulu Rengar initiation composition. So this is what I was talking about. Uh, they are starting to show new dimensions here as we ramp up into this big international event. Yeah. We've seen it from, we've seen it from Jin Air, and we've seen it from CJ. We have not seen it from GE. Massive wombo combos coming in here too. Rengar jumps in, gets wild growth, Tibber's stun, ultimate Into from Chaos uh, Victor. Storm. Yeah, yeah, it's, exactly. it's going to get ugly. This is a big team Just fighting composition from GE. They have good pick potential too, though. So nothing, yeah, they do. Nothing uh, to turn your nose up at. And what do you think about this Cassidy for uh, Bliss in the mid lane against the Victor? I think it'll be fine, but I think he's going to suffer in the late game. I think he's going to suffer in the mid game, too. It will be really difficult, Samsung, to push their advantage, I think, with a Cassidy. They should take a more zone control mage, but they're not going to. So they're going to be going for the back line here with Hecarim yeah. and Cassidy instead. So I, I think this comp's a little bit disjointed. I really prefer Nidalee with a more poke or control-oriented mid laner rather than Cassidy. Yeah. So you can synergize. In fact, uh, taking mid Ezreal here would have been really nice for them, I feel. Well, but how can... Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if Eve can actually do any ganking early on. I think it's going to be pretty tough. I'm actually surprised they didn't pick the Sivir. 
but they will take the Lucian instead. Has been uh, something that Prey has been picking up a little bit more re recently and can do well in the lane early on, pre-6 against Corky. So a yeah. little bit of a lane bully. They're going for a kill lane here. Lucian, Annie, very fearsome indeed in terms of laying down that burst damage. But if Samsung, I mean, it's always a long shot. If they can make it into the late game, they should have a pretty big damage advantage just because they will be able to weather the storm with Kasten and Hecarim getting into the back line and then using Zonyas, using that Onslaught of Shadows, the Hecarim ultimate. So, but something tells me they're not going to get there, Noah. <laughs> well, unless we see something very different than what we've seen in nearly every other Samsung game, I, I agree with you. We'll see. I mean, it, it does put a lot of uh, pressure on the coordination of Samsung as well, too, to be able to create the flanks with Hecarim. And Kuve so far, he just hasn't shown himself to be the type of top player that can handle it. But we'll see what happens. Here we go. Game one, Samsung versus G Tigers. Let's get in the game. Here we go, guys. Welcome to Summer News Rift, and that was the most pathetic cheer I've ever heard. Poor Samsung fans. GE responds with a, a much larger one. That was like one, two, three, and then the fans were like, Samsung fans. <laughs> oh. I feel bad for the players, not the organization. And he tossing out the trap. It's all right. I think some of these Samsung players actually do have a future here in League of Legends. So oh, absolutely. Yeah. Too concerned about the players. Wraith, Theory, Eve all look like uh, we could see a lot more of them and we could see them in teams being much more successful as well, too. We've got a good feeling about Ace. Oh, Eve taking a bit of damage from Lee. Hopping out of the brushes. Wow, look at that. Already just really annoying. Grass Bliss even. That's three players on Samsung. Four players forced to recall early on just at level one. Well, here we go, Monte Cristo. <laughs> Dark times for Here Samsung, more than likely incoming. But yeah. I'm, I'm always excited to see Eve's jungle Nidalee. I, I really do think this is a great champion for him, and he has been performing individually, even if though, even if the rest of his team and the shot calling really hasn't been there for Samsung. He's a great mechanical player, and he really understands the ins and outs of this champion in particular. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, we're either going to see Samsung get. I would say considerably better over the course of the year with some changes maybe to top and mid. you know, Or we're going to see these good players go to other organizations that could uh, use them to make a, a much better team like Wraith going to KT or something like that, just to sort of theory craft it a bit. Yeah, it's possible that Samsung becomes more of a, a farm team at this point. So we yeah. will see Small Krug taken uh, by Fury. And taking a look at our XP bars right there, and Gorilla and Prey got some of that XP. They did the traditional Korean start now on the bottom side, which is on red side to go ahead and take the small golem from the blue camp to give yourself a very subtle experience advantage. Yeah, just one of them. Just one of them. So you can do it really quickly. You won't miss any minions. You can still push the wave for level two. And you get there about one minion faster. Turn up. So I wonder who we're going to see at level two first. Looks like will be GE Tigers. Of course, most of the time you do give that little blue golem or blue sentinel rather to the AD carry, which is what they did. Level two for Wraith now and Fury. Gorilla hops out level two as well. He's got his stun built up right now. Oh no, he doesn't. He just used it for a trade on Wraith. But still Prey and Gorilla, they hit level two at approximately the same wow. time. Gorilla taking some harassment right there, but problem is Fury's low. Fury has to use his potion first, so Gorilla and Prey really coming out on the better end of these trades so yeah. far. Gorilla's being very aggressive right now with his Annie, which is a nice thing to do with that ridiculously long auto range. You gotta make that money from your Spell Thief's Edge. So Lee and Eve both on the bottom side of the map right now. Lee actually delaying picking up his blue buff for quite some time. Goes Krugs, Red, Wolves. Oh, Kuro taking a lot of damage here. Wrong. So that's a pretty unusual jungle path, but yeah. does recall, get the Trailblazer, and we'll see him uh, more than likely. Now he's not going for the blue buff. I wonder what he's doing with that, huh. actually, Doa. Possibly going to give an earlier one to Kuro. 
maybe. We Rengar, could of course, not very blue buff dependent because he doesn't have mana. Right, we could see that happen, in fact, as he goes back to the Raptors right now. So keep an eye on that one. I think that'd be a good idea. And here we go, Eve coming in to try to get a pick on the Smeb. Smeb with the Whimsy speeding himself up a little bit. He's able to get out. No summoners used there. So Eve trying to put a little bit of pressure onto the lanes. He's been pretty good with his spear so far. And there Lee using the Raptor buff to clear out that ward and try brush. I'm not sure that was really the best length for him to gank right there. It was pushed pretty far back. And uh, yeah. of course, the Hecarim without the hard CC. Nidalee does have a bit of a, a rough time ganking in this situation because bottom has all that hard crowd control and the great skirmishers in Annie and Lucian. And Kassadin doesn't have hard CC for you to follow up on this victor, especially pre-6. Yeah. So top's pretty much what he's got to work with right now. He's not going to be very happy as a jungler with this situation. There's not a clear cut lane where he could pick up a kill. Meanwhile, Lee brings the crowd control himself just a little bit more as we see a lot of trading uh, going on in this bottom lane. Gorilla missed his W actually on Wraith. That would have gone a little bit better, but Gorilla was slightly out of range for that Cinerate. Yeah, gotta be careful with that one. Still, Lee's gonna find some options here on the bottom side of the map. Meanwhile, uh -oh, he's coming in. looking okay. for the spear again, but look at the positioning there. We're behind the minion wave. Gorilla trying to maybe Hmm. Take a spear right here, but they're trying to stay away from that brush, it looks like, generally speaking. Just on the off chance that Eve is there. Yeah, well, I think that's a good working. idea. Prey's getting dangerously close, though. Might be able to get a flash out of this one. We'll see. Waiting a long time. The lane is pushing up. And Wraith, Wraith and so Fury. so far back, though. I, well, Wraith here and Fury are Rengar. suddenly playing so safe. I think they're kind of telegraphing this one a bit too much. All right, first blue went to Kuro, by the way. He just oh, got Lee it knows. handed off to him. Lee knows. He stopped the Gromp. He's coming down. There we go. Flash W on the Grill to slow him down. Grilla flashes a knock up. Eve comes in. There's the exhaust. Lee coming in. First oh, blood still goes to Samsung. Up. He did indeed. Eve still maybe in a little bit of trouble here. Prey trying to get there. The teleport. Oh, here we go. Kills for GE Tigers coming in. They do go 1-1. One, one. Jungler going down. Eve a little bit low. Ooh. That was, that was dangerous. Actually. Teleport feigned by Smeb. I think he got knocked out of it by Kube, though, I'm guessing. It's like that may have been a possibility. I wasn't paying attention to the top yeah, lane right just, there. Uh, just guessing there. So, in any case, let's take a look at that gank again, because coming in, this is where you want to be as Rengar, on the counter gank. It's very important. But Gorilla missing a couple of his abilities right there. Not great mechanics. There's yep. the knockout from Smeb. Man, that was really sloppy by the Tigers, actually. Look at Lee, though. That flash jump, actually. So he used Rengar's passive flash back into the brush, because it actually got him more distance than the flash itself. <laughs> Very creative play. Good use of flash right there, you got to say. Yeah, I think uh, trading the jungler for a support isn't the worst thing in the world. Eve picking up that tier. They did get the first blood, though. Or and first blood, and it went on to Wraith, so it's not. Eh, it could be worse, you know. Prey got the kill on the other side, though, and yeah. that's the real story. Definitely bit of an advantage there. Yeah, I think even if we had GE. hit that bullet, too, I think Gorilla still would have went down. Gorilla just was had gotten way too low in some of those trades. Well, he also, like, fired all his spells the wrong direction yeah, right there. We saw the W go either. backwards, the Bola miss, then Smeb trying to teleport way too close to that minion line. Yeah. Easy, easy, easy for Kuve to stop it. So that looked like it wasn't very well communicated. Obviously, it was GE attempting to react to that play. But, and Rengar at least was on the right side of the map. That was a good counter gank from Lee, and that's how you want to play Rengar pre-6. You got to make sure you know where the other jungler is going to be because his counter ganking is insanely successful if you can hit that first bola. Yeah. Blue buff going over to Bliss. There you go. And Kuro has not gone back yet. Now finally going back here. At level seven, we'll see what he picks up. A lot of victors have chosen to get that upgraded E with their first back, and that looks like what he's gonna do. Yep. Indeed he will. Thousand gold to upgrade the hex core. Such a nice boost of AP early on as well. Yeah, it's a lot of AP. It's good stats. And just having that, the upgraded E as well, too, helps you clear waves so much better. Looks like you did a double upgrade. Uh, I believe the second one's red. Uh, the second one is red. Okay. Yeah. First one's blue, second one's red. And then purple. purple. Yeah. Haven't seen a whole lot of Victor lately. What the what? Wow. 
That happens sometimes with jungle diddly. Krug life. Actually, you're you're really squishy. There's he yeah. <laughs> laughing at the food. At least he has a sense of humor about it. Yep. Well, you're not giving anybody gold, at least. <laughs> no, and if he had any buffs, he gets to keep those two. Yeah, that's, that's the, right. The new, the new jungle is is brutal, but for yet strangely more forgiving in certain ways than it used to be. Yeah. So it's not going to be the worst thing. Still has that red buff on him. All right, let's watch all the action again. Yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, Eve, you're you're a little bit low to be doing this right now. Uh oh, so oh. close. Oh, ancient Krug with the sick jungle gank. Bliss getting a little bit low there. Chaos Storm chasing, chasing. Uh, <laughs> Still doing a little bit of damage, moving very slowly at that range, but yeah. Kuro makes it work. And just a few chunks taken out right there, but not anywhere near a substantial advantage for the Tigers yet. Haven't been doing too much. They have been getting some of these towers pretty low, however, but yeah. Lee. Rengar really not one of his preferred jungle pickups this season. Trying something a little bit different. Will get seen on the war through Tribrush. You know, Victor versus Cassidy is a funny match because you've 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 got two champions that can shield themselves, you know? So the traits are a little bit odd. I thought you were gonna say because they're both like cybernetic guys with well, re that, rebreathers. That too, that too. But that's just kind of Darth Vader-y. <laughs> Bliss is more, you know, void oriented, whereas Victor is, you know, part of like the Super Friend Club of Glorious Evolution or whatever his cult's called. I can't remember. I think, if, you know, wouldn't Victor be in approval of Cassidy as we see Smeb get run, run down Smeb. here? Because he already is cybernetically augmented. Shouldn't they be buddies? Is it Victor? Is but Cassidy there, already I, on board? I don't know if Cassidy actually is. He was touched by the void, but is he cybernetically augmented? Well, he has all that breathing. Junk I think on it's him. just. I think it's just magic, though. Magic scuba gear. <laughs> the best cut. You know, if you had magic scuba gear, wouldn't you want it to not be actual equipment? Wouldn't you just well, want it to magically make you breathe underwater? Like the whole water world thing, like Kevin Costner. Yeah, exactly. Gills and stuff like that. That'd be awesome. Yeah, I would just wear it all the time. I just live underwater. Your fingers would get all pruny that way, though. That'd you have, be to, you have to evolve that too. Get some scales. You. I think I'd want scales. You wouldn't want to be a merman, Doa. Merman. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. I'd be a merman. Water is the <laughs> essence of, of I'd wetness. be okay with that. <laughs> Would you? Yeah, I'd be all right with that. I could see you being a merman. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. When it comes to fashion, you're more of like a upper torso tie sort of person than, you know, very... You know, then like a big emphasis on the pants per se. But I'll, I got sweet shoes. You do. You can wear those on your hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll wear them in the same place Cassiopeia wears hers, wherever Style, that is. Style, swim, spinoo. <laughs> there you go. That one's free, spinoo. <laughs> oh, not a lot going on in the game at the moment. Lane's getting farmed up, junglers farming up. Farms farming up. CS lead is uh, definitely tilting a bit towards GE, which is why they have that little gold lead there. I think we might see a dragon attempt in the near future. GE, though, doesn't really seem too concerned about it. They don't really have a lot of vision near dragon, do they? No. They've got that. War they've got a couple wars right outside, but otherwise, they've got enough to make something right now. I there mean, we go. Blizzard Lee calls. is level eight right now. They finally are trying to make a play, but guess what? There's no mid laner there. I think you should just go down to Dragon if the mid laner recalls like that. Well, they may in fact do just that. Yeah, before v two, if you count the bottom lane. Ah, oh, but they can push on this mid turret so easily and still rotate. Yeah, yeah. get that wave just a little bit deeper. It's true. Yep. Oh, there give you that edge, and now. Kuro will be dealing a little bit of poke on to Bliss, but it doesn't look like they're quite committed yet, considering they still have the pressure on bot side. Order to make a play right here. Smep teleport is back up, so he can go down as long as he doesn't get ran over by Hecarim again. I have to say, I'm really not very impressed with Lee's Rengar so far. He was in the right place once, but he missed a skill shot. He hasn't made good use of his ultimate yet. Hmm in order to get a play or get an edge for his team. And Samsung will be happy just farming up right here. It's up to GE to dictate the pace of this game early. They're the ones with more of a timer on their Oh, here we go. Here All we used go. by Rengar now. Jumps onto Kube. Kube ults away. There's a flash. He gets the ball. He gets a slow. Kube in a lot of trouble. And Smeb 
with the kill. You were saying he about still, Lee's Rengar, Monty? He still missed the skill shot to start that, though. Oh, did he? Oh, well, I never mind. <laughs> The bowler just flew off into oblivion <laughs> this first right there. He's just showing <laughs> off. He's like, I don't even need this skill shot. Woo! Just throws it away. It's like, check me out, man. Anyway, uh, could have, should have waited for the ultimate right there because that's Kuve's only movement ability. So if you come in like that, you can actually just leap onto him and wait for him yeah. to use the Onslaught of Shadows or predict that the ult is coming and just throw it in that direction in general. So the Onslaught of Shadows. Oh, Kuro, Eve, maybe in a little bit of trouble. Nope, got caught up with the W. He's okay. Got frozen doing a sweet dance move right there. He did. Strike a pose. <laughs> come on, Vogue. Well, the uh, Rift Scuttler is in control, or is uh, Samsung's at the moment. Ah, oh, but double recall. If uh, GE gets wind of this, I just really want somebody to do Dragon, apparently. Do you want them to do a Dragon Ward? Because that's what you got. You did it. I got it. You got that Dragon Ward. I feel okay now. <laughs> it's almost okay. the same thing, right? Yeah, I mean, we're 15 minutes in. People should be doing the Dragon, right? I mean, it's Dragon time, guys. Mm -hmm. Come on. Not sure about this plan, Kuve. Yeah, it might be time to kill Kuve again. I think it is. Hello. Oh, yep, just gonna jump right onto him. Kuve knocks it back against the wall. There's a nice wild growth. And Kuve, you're glue now. That is a dead Gluve. horse. Gluve. <laughs> <laughs> that only works when he plays Hecarim, apparently, though. Yep. Um, now he's Q Kuve. <laughs> I don't really know what he was thinking right there. I don't know either. He, he has not very much magic resist, and he had no vision in there. There could have been a Rengar. In fact, he has no vision on that entire top side of the map. If if that pink ward is in danger, and he has to go in three times in order to try and kill it, it doesn't take that long for Rengar to walk there on the top side. So, Questionable decision <laughs> by uh, QQV. He didn't even really need to take that ward out. <laughs> Sometimes you get fixated on wards, though. What can you say? Hey, I can understand that. Oh, Kuro, they get the flash. So they got that going for them. Kuro already with the Abyssal. I think that's really smart, considering that he is rather immobile, and he is legitimately threatened by Eve's Nidalee. Yeah, I agree. Can kill him very quickly if given the opportunity. It certainly helps the damage uh, coming out of Annie and Lulu as well, too, so that is useful in team fights as well. Uh, yeah, absolutely. That is, there a little is bit more MR. Pretty high upside to that item, I think, in general right now. Yeah, plus it looks cool. That's it's like really, a, it's an aesthetic decision. Also, Victor can only have scepters. He's only allowed to buy sticks. Ah, I see. See, he's holding the scepter. He already has one in his inventory. Just need more, needs more canes. I'm waiting for the day when Riot puts, like, graphical representations of the items you pick up on the characters. <laughs> Ash has, ridiculous like, swords stuff. all over her bow. I know, right? All the 80 carries are just have, carrying a backpack full of swords. And what the hell is the Trinity Force, actually? I don't know. It you looks know what like I mean? a sword it's with like three blades, kind of. I think the best theory that people have come up with, because it's a, it's a, it's the zeal blades and the sheen. But people ask, where is the, where is the phage? Oh yeah. And the best explanation I've heard is that it's actually like a sword pinwheel, where the phage is the handle. Yeah, I think that is very <laughs> reasonable. Makes a lot of sense to me. Also, why do you call it a trinity force when it's three swords and a handle? Uh, I don't know. Should it be the quad quadrana quadrinary force? Maybe it was supposed to be the Trinity Four, and they just <laughs> misspelled it. Yeah, that makes even more sense. That is the total most nonsensical <laughs> punk band name I've ever heard. Trinity Four. It's like, what? No, but Trinity's three, but four is... No, what? They're just subverting your perceptions, man. Yeah, first world anarchists right there. <laughs> name my band Trinity Four. All right, well, looks like it's finally dragon time. Spear on the Smeb and Trap on the down. Smeb. Everything on the Smeb. They get the dragon. And oh, here we go. Home guard coming in. Oh, and everyone gets pushed away a little bit by Wraith. Kube with the onslaught of shadows goes through. Wild growth on Kuro, though, stays alive. Meanwhile, on the back line, some kills coming in for the GE Tigers. Lee manages to pick up the one on the Fury. It's one for two right now in favor of the Tigers. And I think they're going to be pretty satisfied with that as they push down this mid lane. Well, the only thing they may kill this game is Praise KDA. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Take him out, but with everyone else surviving, 
It's a relatively small prize. The Prey is very vulnerable. Uh, Nidalee, Hecarim, and Kassadin are a hell of a thing to try and live against. Let's Nidalee check this out again. It was too. a nice zone right there. Now they catch Eve early on. Good to Pretty good stun. Fury does banish the Valk out during the course of the Monsoon. And Prey just gets annihilated in the back line by Kube and Eve. So much damage. Yeah coming out with this sheen on the Hecarim early on. Well, Eve nearly had another kill with that spear back on the Kuro as well, too. Eve is a, Eve is a scary Nidalee player, that's for sure. I'm, I'm actually surprised teams haven't started to ban it against him yet because in my mind, that's been so effective for Samsung to win these early skirmishes with. But he, keep, he keeps getting it time after time, and you wouldn't think there would be that much left to ban against Samsung, but no team I think maybe taking that pick as seriously as they should. Yeah. You know, I don't really think the whole third hand thing for Victor is really a good idea. I mean, you'd think it would be smarter to just incorporate this technology into one of your existing hands rather than make like a floppy third appendage that comes off your back that can just like get cut off by, I don't know, any of the million swords that's in the game. <laughs> and then what? Then you have no lasers. Well, wouldn't you say the same thing about his arms, though? Couldn't they get yeah. cut off by any of the million swords yeah, in this but game? No, look at Victor's like extra arm, though. I know, but it, it protects his neck from decapitation on one side. He I just like wraps it, it around okay. his neck when like the swords No, if you in. try and cut off his head, can't do it. There's a, there's a metal arm in the way. It like catches a sword or something? Yeah, there you go. Wow. You just block it. It's impressive, man. I don't know, it doesn't look sturdy enough to do that to me. You don't know what it's made out of? I can guess. What? I don't know. There's Kuro <laughs> oh, maybe in a little bit of trouble. Nice W there. Did you mean you can't Teleport guess? Teleport coming in. They're going to try to get some kills here. Smeb on the attack. The Chaos Storm chasing <laughs> Eve just out of range. Using that Seraph's Embrace already stacked up. That's the advantage of Eve's build. When you go Machete into tier, you can stack it much faster than a laner can. Yep. So you do have it by 20 minutes. It's a great power spike for your jungle level. Sure enough, or this. Italy. Ah, uh, Eve, Evelyn. He's having a lot of trouble on Sada Shell's coming through. Nice fear. Kube gets stopped up, but not before they get the kill on the Smeb. And Gorilla on the run now. Fury coming in, Valks into a wall, but still gets close enough to do a little bit more damage. Eve coming in, and there's a spear on the minion. Took one for the team there. Bliss coming ahead to try to get a bit more damage on. Looks like this mid turret might be in a bit of trouble. And GE Tigers, they don't have a lot of heal, do they? No, they don't. And no, their back don't. line is very vulnerable yeah. to this composition. It is rather all in. They have to be very careful about Whoa. how they engage right here. Gorilla still has Tibbers up, actually. Didn't drop it over the course of that engage. He may find yeah. himself with a blue buff. And Indeed he will. Pink Ward is there to catch him out, but there's no one to respond, so not going to be able to do much about it. Bliss will go ahead and take that blue buff. No major objective taken by Samsung over the course of that engagement right now, so it doesn't mean a whole lot. True enough. Well, Sweb's got his death cap now, so a bit more damage added on there. But G's going to need to be really careful about how they approach these team fights. You know, like you mentioned before the game, as the longer the game goes on, the stronger the Samsung team's going to be. And Hecarim could get to a point where he's just going to be unstoppable. And he did just finish his Trinity for us right now. Yeah, it's really late for that item, though. Kuve opted to go for the Merc Tread and Home Guard Enchant before yeah. even finishing his first core item. We should have seen that five minutes ago, but he's been having a tough time in this early game, going down in kills early on, so. He's made some plays with home guard too, but throughout all that, Samsung has still been the team on the losing end of all the objectives. Two towers and a dragon. GE doing a good job of controlling things that way, and now the second dragon is going to be up in about a minute. Still have to like their position right now. Oh, here we go. Cora and Bliss one. scrapping a little bit. Lee right there to back him up. Does have ult. Yep. Meanwhile, Prey gets the other bottom turn. Oh, oh flash. flash ahead. He's going in. Fury there for damage as well. Kuro going down. He manages to pick up the kill. And the ignite, not enough. 29 health at the end of that one. And somehow, he lives. Wow. Whoa. What a great play no from Kuro right there. There's a, there's a candidate for your 
or Zubu Super I was going to say, yeah. Let's check that one out that's again. That's the Zubu Super Getting right there. chased right there. Kuro dumps all of his cooldowns onto Fury and the Ignite. Ends up walking away while Scumbag Wraith uses the shield on himself. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he knew he wasn't going to be able to get the killing blow there, so you might as well keep yourself alive, you know, keep that KDA where it should be. I appreciate that. Great play from Kuro. Such a fast reaction to that, too. Yeah. Surprising to see Kastin flash in like that, and man, whew, impressive stuff. Just the, the speed at which he went through his abilities right there was fantastic. Yeah. It wasn't a bad attempt by Samsung either. It's no, a scary not moment. at all. It was a, it was a very good Ooh. attempt. It was close. But that reaction from Kuro was <laughs> so on point. Yeah. It looks like Samsung's going to finally get their first turn of the game here after that second dragon was taken by the GE Tigers. So Tigers with a very comfortable 3,000 gold lead at the moment. Just doing what he can right there. Will take out a pink ward. Kuro harassing him with the death laser. Uh, Bliss is starting to ramp up right here. The problem is, is that he went for the abyssal scepter. This is going to delay his zonias. And you know what, though? He really needs that zonias. Yeah, I agree. He has to be able to get into the back line as Hecarim. That should be his one goal. That is their win condition. And if he's charging in. So by delaying that for an entire core item, yeah, it's a little tough to lane against Victor, but. That said, it does it does delay your power spike even further. If you can soak up a death ray with that Zonias as well, too, it takes a lot of the damage out of Victor. Yeah, and Kuro getting increasingly close to his own Zonia's Hourglass, which will be quite useful for his own survivability. That's going to be a big tipping point because the problem is, is if Bliss goes in with Hecarim, and Kuro uses a round of cooldowns and then Zonia's, and Bliss doesn't have Zonia's, he's just going to get lit up yeah. by the Chaos Storm and not be able to burst down Kuro. Kuro will just be sitting there nice and golden in his own ult while Hecarim and Cassidy take the damage. So, uh, it's I understand that he had to do it to survive the laning phase, but it's certainly not an ideal situation for Bliss, and it will set their timing back by a, a good amount. Yeah. Well, for now, the GG Tigers can just kind of keep control of the lanes. Not much incentive to push really hard at this point. For GE, they're certainly the ones controlling the pace of this game. Lee starting with the locket as well. They need to be able to survive that round of burst. Now, not the most AP coming in out of Samsung, but against Eve's poke, it does make sense to pick up that item, even if they aren't running two AP lanes. You know, they've got the Corky as well, so I guess it's, I guess it is definitely a good pickup right here. This is an interesting point in the game because GE Tigers have a big lead, but I think a lot of teams in solo queue are unsure what to do in this position if they are the team in the lead. Because uh, I've seen, and now we're going a little bit low ELO, or low ELO, I guess I should say. But in this situation, so many teams get a lead like this in landing phase. They get a few turrets, and then it's like, all right, what do we do now? It's a little bit dangerous to push the lanes too far. There's no dragon, really. It's too early for Baron. So you see a lot of teams, you know, going way too far into the jungle. People splitting off and just getting picked and dying. This is a point I feel like in a lot of games where people throw. Yeah. So how do you avoid that? Well, GE is playing this smart. They're not going too far beyond their ward line. GE actually exactly. could use some more wards on the map right now overall. Yeah. But for them, it's much more about playing objectives because you have to look at the team composition as well. And GE will benefit from someone running into them or particularly setting up some some picks and a choke, or to initiate a team fight there, just because Annie and Victor's choke control is better than anything that Samsung has. So it's pretty much just a waiting game for them. Exactly. I and mean, right now, patience is the key. You get wards a little bit into their jungle, maybe, on the edge. You farm up your lanes as you need to, and wait for that next dragon, really. I'm not even sure GE is really interested in buying too many more wards, because they have good enough coverage right now to keep them farming safely on their side of the map and they can force those fights around the next objective in two minutes when the dragon comes up. GE can just 
not over invest on wards for the time being. They don't have a sightstone jungler this team yeah. with this game. Neither team does, in fact. So that's what I want to emphasize, is that if you have a lead and it doesn't look like there's any clear thing you should be doing, anything that looks too good, then that probably means you shouldn't be doing anything. It probably means you should just be safe, have vision, farm and, and wait for farm. them to yeah. overextend or make a mistake, certainly. Yeah. And here we go, Rengar sitting in the brush right now, Smeb the one, designated to clear out those wards. They're going to try and contest this blue buff. That looks like Hecarim takes a turret down in bot lane, but GE, Threatening this Baron control here this blue buff a little bit early. Yeah, lead. Uh, there was a ultimate. pink ward right there, so they did see the Rengar coming in. And Hecarim is a major split pushing threat in this game, for sure. They may try and do a Baron or at least bait it right here. It looks like yeah. Smeb's recall was delayed, and therefore he will have to oh. finish. Oh, Whoa. big mistake, actually. Yeah, I'm surprised he tried Two to. Two towers teleport. with that Hecarim still pushing. They get three. Wow. Holy smoke, Samsung right back into this one. That gold lead was just annihilated. I'm really surprised GE got away with that. Kind of sloppy to let them do that. Four turrets. Wow, did that just happen? <laughs> They've got the gold lead. What is this? Wow, they definitely could have defended that. This is yeah. extremely sloppy play for the GE Tigers. They now lost their gold lead. Man. Huge amounts of gold coming in, but these recalls are Probably going to cost them the dragon, 15 seconds. Yeah, it's not good timing They don't for have dragon. good setup, but whatever. You trade one dragon for those four towers any day of the week. Yeah. Even if it is, is the third. What is he doing? They, uh, Hecarim, they, know the, they know the threat of the Hecarim split push, but they just allow Trinity Force Hecarim to walk all over them. Yeah, that was too passive. You still need to defend your lanes. That's kind of... That's kind of a basic thing in League oh, of Legends. You don't a, want to lose your turrets. Has a ton of wave clear, too. Yeah. It's totally unnecessary. There's now, really they, no they, they do have three. Oh, my. Kuve. He's going to get another one of these. Smeb doesn't have home guards. There he goes. Buys him. Yeah, he's got to get there in time. He may not even get there in time, though. Yeah, he will. A lot of damage onto that turret. A little bit, anyway. Gorilla chasing, but yeah, they have to let Kuve go. He's just a bit too fast. And this lets Samsung get vision control back over Baron again. So GE, all right, they're like, well, we want to see what it's like to play from being behind. We don't, we don't have enough experience like this, so uh, let's let's let him. A let dangerous him get some proposition. Turrets. Samsung's had the edge in vision so far this game. GE hasn't been buying a lot of boards. To, to be oh, fair, they haven't had to. Uh, now they do, though. Now it's changing things. Lee, another kind of bad ultimate right there. Lee's Rengar has been. Not very good. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's it's also a Wraith as well, too. He's been, done a very good job of taking care of that engage with the Whirlwind as well. And Prey popping his Ghost Blade right there, but not finding anything. They're going to try and wow. two-man this Baron. That is very dangerous. We'll see if Samsung could do it. I don't think this is a great idea, but there is no contest on it right now. Hecarim The Tigers don't seem to realize teleport. this. They may actually get it. Oh, they might still win the team fight, wow. but GE Tigers are going to allow Samsung to get this Baron, and Samsung, they're going to get away. GE Tigers, man. Get it together, guys. Absolutely no vision control right now. Now they lose the Baron. Not sure what GE is doing this game. This is getting very sloppy. I, I think the I think the IEM mind games are pretty strong right here. <laughs> well, they're just playing poorly. I mean, yeah, they, I it's not about their team composition or their champion selections. This yeah. is just straight up extremely poor map control from GE. Yeah, I think we are seeing a team that's like, well, whatever. I think whatever is sort of the characterizing uh, theme for this game so far from GE. I think there's a reason we haven't seen Lee's Rengar before this anyway. Sure, I he guess. hasn't died, but he has done absolutely nothing with this pickup, really. Yeah. Has had poor skill shot accuracy, relatively poor ultimates. I mean, they, they could very well lose this game right now. Yeah, they could. They're trying to protect their remaining tier two turret, but Samsung with that edge in the tower objectives. Now, the, the thing that is keeping GE running is the fact that it's three dragons to zero right now. So they are zeroing in on that very important final yeah. dragon stack that can dictate the course of this game. You know, this is one of these things that Korean teams do. You know, the good tr Korean teams always lose to the worst Korean teams. It seems inevitable, like once a season we see something like this, where one of the best teams just gets kind of sloppy. And 
and then they drop a game or even a series sometimes. I mean, geez, the wave clear is so good, and the, there's not that much of a difference. Oh, this is bad. We've got to be careful. Grill coming in. Talisman used right there as well. Yep, that's a short cooldown. So here we go. Kuve back, <laughs> roaring out of the gates and dealing with this wave in the mid lane. It's pretty fast. Smeverly doesn't have a lot of survivability either. He's going to be building into Lich Bane next, but. Not that Zonia's Hourglass, he may find himself in trouble. Zonia's completed on Bliss right now, so honestly, I don't think there's a better time. Samsung is enjoying a bit of a power spike. Eve has a QSS just for that additional bit of survivability and ability to get out of the Annie ultimate and continue moving around, staying alive and throwing spears in from the perimeter of the fight. So I think, I think Samsung's in a great position right now, at least in terms of itemization. Mm -hmm and power spikes to make something of their advantage. Look how many wards are out. There are like two wards on the map right now for GE. I, I've never seen GE play this poorly. Inexplicable. Well, so many wards by Samsung though. Look at that bottom jungle. <laughs> that, that may be a few too many actually, but uh, uh, better too many than too few. It's definitely too many, but look, they have two stealth totems, uh, stealth ward totems right now. Meanwhile, we still have no upgraded trinkets on the side of GE. That's wow. pretty inexcusable to have nothing. I mean, those were made cheaper, especially the well, Oracle's just, lens. Uh, this is really sloppy play from GE. I don't really know not, what to make of this. I mean, it's just not something that you see GE do. I can't think of another time where I've seen them not even upgrade their trinkets, you know? Especially after those changes. Yeah, I think clearly pretty. they just are not too worried about the series. Well, they should be worried about dropping this game because it would be pretty embarrassing for them. Still a minute on that drag. Yeah. Until we go hit number four. And Smeb will be pushing out the side lanes in anticipation of that. Still almost no wards picked up there from GE. They have mm. one pink ward in an inventory. And, and a side stone and one and other a, green. And one green ward. And still no oracles lens. So this is just, this is just bad play straight up from GE. Very bizarre. Well, dragging up in 20. And that's really been what's kept GE in the game is getting all three dragons so far. And if they can get fourth, that'll put a lot of pressure on to Samsung to try to end it quick. That fifth dragon stack is a big deal. 10 seconds now. GE Tigers needs to get there. All right, here it is. Yep, Kuve recalling, he's got his teleport if he needs to. Smeb doesn't need to teleport. He's with the team right now. Dragon activated, they're gonna go ahead and pull it out of the pit. Here comes the teleport, Hackrim's gonna come in from the side. Grow the flash, Tibbers comes in, Zonia's popped by Bliss immediately. But here comes Kuve, gets everybody with that ultimate. And Prey, he may go crazy, or he's going down. Eve doing a lot of damage to me, dodges the spear. Prey running off the wild growth. Smeb a little bit low as well, the kills start coming in for GE. One for three, now make it one for four. And man, everybody grouped up for that Hecarim ultimate. It was lights out for the GE Tigers. G did the right thing right there. The problem is, is that Samsung, we've reached the late game and they're in that yep. power spike. Bliss was able to use that Zonia's Hourglass oh and that back line lane dive is, is just really real right now. What can you say? They, as soon as they saw the teleport, you'll notice they immediately all in, which is what they should do with that Annie, right? Yeah, oh, absolutely. They should avoid the flank by engaging immediately. But that play, just not there. Now they're getting their jungle swept out. They didn't do a good enough, good enough job of taking out wards, so Kuve had something to teleport into yeah. to That's get it. into the river. And he's just so fast that there was almost no time. And there's the first dragon of the game. Let's check this out again. So you see them try and engage immediately, but this is the wrong target to engage on. Yeah. They should have engaged on Wraith right there, 100%. He has the Zonia's Hourglass. Sloppy engage from GE. Bliss eventually gets in. Kuro Zonia's a bit late right there. And then everybody's in the choke. Prime target for Hecarim. They get Lee. Smeb manages to escape. He's the only one. Well, pretty pathetic performance coming out from the GE Tigers right now. And they could have won this game. They had a great early game. And they just kind of stopped caring, it seems like. Underwarding. Yeah. Not. 
upgrading trinkets, just such sloppy, sloppy play. Well, the not upgrading trinket things is, is one that really blows my mind because that's just something that, you know, people upgrade their trinkets in bronze, man. <laughs> well, they're still not out of it, though. No, it's, they could still win. It remains win, a very close game. Those dragons are buoying them somewhat. They're going to try and... Uh, they could catch Kuve here. Lee coming in. There's a lot of damage onto him. He's going to get that ult off. Oh, they get killed the him. That's huge. They did indeed. Kuro not taking a lot of damage until that spear came in at the very end. That was what the GE Tigers need. Are they finally going to pull things together now? Well, look at Samsung, though. They're posturing. Uh, GE has to decide if they're going to recall to deal with this super minion wave, but Samsung in the position they want to be in. Poking right now. Yep. Preventing them from doing anything. Here comes Gorilla. Uh, comes in. He's got a lot of speed with that talisman. They get the Tibbers on it Fury, but QSS right. It gets him out immediately. So there's a couple of cooldowns gone for both sides, but more so bad for GE. Nice spear lands on to Prey. Eve doing work with that jungle Nidalee. And GE has to go back, like you mentioned, to handle the super minion wave. So the threat eliminated. Samsung oh, doing a great job of dealing with the fact that Kuve did get picked off going a bit too close to that Baron pit, but they make sure that there's nothing that GE can do during that situation to capitalize, so they lose very little in the end. Recall's coming in for, for uh, Samsung. They've got good vision control around the Baron, so they don't have to worry about a whole lot. And look at this, they have double QSS, they have a Crucible as well, so Annie's threat pretty much nullified at the given time. Not to mention the Zonia's Hourglass too. Yeah. It's really hard for them. Meanwhile, Righteous Glory complete onto Hecarim, so he's got huh. that ability to get his teammates in there with the engage as well into the back line and not too close to being done from Gorilla right now. It's going to be a while before he can build into that item. It's not looking good for GE, but they bought themselves a little bit more time they do have the damage to efficiently clear out this mid wave. And Kuro about maxed out in terms of items. Why does he still have a flask when he could be buying wards? I don't know what's going on, Noah. Oh, well, here we go. They're going to try something else. They do blow up Wraith. That does help a lot. Grill taking a lot of damage, though. Gets the shield from Lulu, and they're going to back off. So Doesn't really help him, though. Yeah. Uh, a they, pick can is take a pick, out, but... they can take out Wraith. They can take out Kuve, but. The damage from Eve and Corky still the main threat in terms of this poke. And Gorilla so you can't without. commit to going for the Baron right now. Gorilla's still very low after that one as well. He's got to go back, and Super Minion Wave just keeps on pushing. Well, without Tibbers as well, Andy's usefulness is pretty minimal. Standing in award. Yep. Uh -oh. Only where there was an item called <laughs> Oracle's Lens. Yeah, or if you had a pink ward, maybe that would help too. Well, their pink ward just got killed. They were in the river. Fury still harassing with those rockets, delaying recalls as much as he can. Wraith up in two seconds, and Samsung has retaken control of the Baron Pit in a 4v5 scenario. Wow. I'm not 100% sure on this, but I'm pretty sure that uh, Gorilla is the only one who's bought pink wards so far this game on the GE Tigers. No, there have been multiple ones out on the map at different times. So, yeah, there, there have been. But. Not enough. Uh, Lee gets caught, has to flash. Fury doing a bit of damage there. Nice spear at the end from Eve. And they're going to start that dragon. Yeah, with Lee a bit low. All right, they're going to back off, playing it safe. Recalls, though. Or the jungler and the top laner. Yeah, Kuhei waiting, waiting to see if he needs to teleport. And it looks like the teleport's going to come in from Smeb for now, uh -oh. but there's a teleport behind oh, them. Rengar's not there. Yep, Kuve coming in, and he's going to turn around, trying to get an angle, goes right back onto Prey. Prey trying to kite out of that. There's a wild growth onto him, a kill already for Bliss here. Prey dodges over the wall, still alive for now. Smeb trying to get any damage he can, going Bliss a bit low, Prey a double kill him. for Prey. Prey making the huge plays right now. A little bit of damage onto E. Fury's still up, and it looks like GE. There's the Zonia's onto Kuro, keeping him alive, and Wraith trying to escape with Fury. He's extremely low right now, and it looks like GE managed to just barely brawl their way out of that Jeez. team fight, and that is going to be an inhibitor for the GE Tigers now. Yeah, recall still coming in, definitely an inhibitor. If Prey hadn't kited his little heart out right there using yeah. all his summoners, this would be a very different story. Inhibitor taken, GE 
squeaking by in this lane, goes back into a gold lead. Oh, I wonder if uh, they can take a Baron off of this. Lee is very low, but there's still Let's a good timer. Let's take a look timer. at this again. So watch the engage right here. Kuve comes around, great dodge. Yes, there was a little bit of a stun coming in for Prey, but he's able to get the damage down on Kuve. Kuve's ult, but Kuro zoning out Fury entirely. Prey flashes over the wall, wild growth onto him. Bliss wow, this is comes amazing. in, there's the double kill, constant kiting, great control by Prey that entire fight. And we can see that G Tigers just took Baron as well. Fury and Wraith barely getting out of there, so GE Tigers gets inhibitor, gets Baron. Maybe they're maybe they're tired of uh, of losing this one. Actually, it's like Lee ulted right there. He's gonna come he in, did. and wow, is he fast! Oh boy, didn't quite get there in time. Oh, Kube coming in now. They want this fourth dragon as well. Will help uh, them. This could be dangerous for the GE Tigers. No, uh, they they actually shouldn't have activated the dragon. They should just wait right yeah. now for the minion wave to press forward. It's making a slow march into the base. No need to accelerate this. Ooh. As long as you can dodge those skill shots. Yeah, blue buff taken by Prey, it looks like. Yeah, that was a bit of a mistake. Yeah, would have rather gotten that. Lots of money on GE, as we can see right now. They may just have to give this one up. They looks are. Like they They're will. choosing just to give it up. Yeah. There's no, there's no real issue with that. All the lanes are pushing up. It's not a big deal. It's still only the second dragon now for Samsung. Yeah, and they have the Baron buff, so the pressure yeah. is still going to be yeah, it's not quite a high. Want. Gorilla going for a blue pot right now. Wow. So trying to amp his damage a little bit. Apparently not enough to finish that Righteous Glory immediately. <laughs> okay. So GE fighting their way back in pretty ugly game. Although you do have to give credit to Samsung. Their poke has been yeah. very solid. Their positioning has made it difficult for GE to do much. But GE Tigers this game they remind me of samsung white when they were like really ahead you know sometimes <laughs> samsung true. white even at worlds last year they would have these games with like ah we're gonna win the series it's like ah, well we'll just give them this one you know <laughs> careful tsm fans might hear you <laughs> i call them like i see them man um, I, I was thinking about you've the grand, got, i was thinking about the grand final got, specifically that you've time got 2020 vision my friend <laughs> i was actually thinking more about the uh, the grand finals of worlds last year but that applies too Ray, Tigers. so many shields. Look at that. Yeah. Just late game Lulu. The moves on Frey with that whimsy and the shield. So Smab coming into his own right now. That much AP on a Lulu does make it very easy to siege these towers. We had the Jugger Maw before, and now we've got like the Lucian Notch or something. The Jugger Lucian. I don't know. He's powerful. Lee coming in. They get a bit of damage on the Eve. Gorilla comes in with the Timber Sun, but Kube comes in from the back line. They need to be careful. There's a kill for Fury already. Eve gets exhausted. Prey still doing damage. Gets that Lulu shield. That's a lot of damage onto Fury. Eve picks one up, though, on the Smeb, and GE have to back off. They did kill the inhibitor, though, but can they get away here? Oh, here comes Kube. Look out, Prey. No flash available. Just use that heal. He's on the run now. Can he possibly get over that wall? It looks like he can, but so can Kuve with the onslaught of shadows, and that is a dead Lucian for 77 seconds. Uh-oh. <laughs> here comes the counterplay. Samsung yeah. is going to be able probably to take an inhibitor right here. Just one, though. A two down for them. Yeah, they'll they'll trade inhibs. Uh, I, I don't think they can finish with Gorilla up in 20 seconds. So. Uh, yeah, we'll see Lee and Kuro, the last line of defense here between uh, Samsung and a win. That inhibitor will go down. Looks like they're going to go in deep. Kuro in a little bit of trouble. Kube doing work. That is a dead victor now. Oh, it and Lee, over. it could be over now. We'll see. Gorilla up in a few. Doesn't look like Samsung wants to try. Yeah, playing it safe. It's probably smarter, but. Yeah, I agree. Kuro should have been playing that much more carefully because that could have been the end of the game, him dying right there instead. Well, you've got range with Victor. Yeah, poke when you can. Don't go up for the Q. GE Tiger is definitely not in their top form this evening. <laughs> no. No, pretty much the bottom form. Samsung stepping up, though. Yeah. And uh, let's see here, right here. Uh, Lee goes in onto Eve, cleanse off of the bowl up, and then the anti stun. They're not able to uh -oh, finish the uh -oh. kill. Action in the real game right now. Uh, Gorilla just got absolutely blown up. Samsung waiting in a brush in the top jungle, waiting for them to come and try to clear that wave near the turret. Glad to see they're still up to their old tricks. Yeah, well, and it works in this over game. Over coming uh, in. Prey has to deal with a massive minion wave, and they two. don't 
Be in a lot of trouble. The There's a wild throw. Can pray do enough damage here. Smeb managed to save Lee. And the, uh, okay. A lot of damage. Oh, there we go. Gets him with, with the, the flash. Works out well. Kube a little bit low. More burst coming in. Prey picks up that double kill. They do lose a turret, but they save the inhibitor. And now GE charging down the mid lane. There's a flash into the Glitterlance and a kill for Smeb. Fury finds Lee in the jungle, though. This may be another one for Samsung. It looks like it is. So people down on both sides of Vulnerable They're and Inhibitor to top. End. Here we go. Yeah, ah, uh, Smeb comes They're in, it looks like. It. He has Lich Bane. Yeah, that's the end of the game right there. Smeb teleporting to that minion, takes the last turret down. Here comes Fury, though, and Bliss. Smeb has to back off. The Inhibitor is back in mid. They're going to take that one again here. Prey coming in. <laughs> And can Prey oh, instead man. end it? Wow, Prey. The manners. No kidding, after a game like that. Well, Prey really saved their butts here. Everybody, he certainly did. Everybody owes Prey a beer after this game because, man, so. he was the only one who had his head on his shoulders oh. in some of these late game here games. Here we go. They've got to speed this one up. Prey taking a lot of damage. There's a zone. He's wild growth. They can just end it now. They can focus the Nexus. And it looks like they will do just that. And the GE Tigers. I think that was a bit of muscle flexing right there, man. It was, uh, that was like, you know, in the movie where they, they like knock down the bad guy and the hero's like, oh, thank goodness it's over. But then the bad guy opens his eyes and he jumps up and kills one of the main characters. So That's what happened in that game. Yeah, I, I feel you. There's so many fundamental flaws in that game. Not selling, <laughs> ugly. Not selling uh, flasks for war is under warning by the GE Tigers. No, very yeah. late trinket upgrades. Just forgetting their fundamentals, Prey having a bit of a chuckle right there. But Samsung played their hearts out that game. They actually did very well all by their standards. It's like at the end of the game, the GE Targets was like, ah, uh, you know what, guys? Let, let's actually 2-0 this. Hold on. Let's actually just win this game and then 